what does emasculate men even mean? Well, I never heard the term until I became a dating coach. So what exactly is it? Well, back in more barbaric times, back in the day, emasculation had a whole different meaning. It meant castration, and it was used as a punishment for men. But that's not what we're talking about here. It's, it's, a, it's more of a metaphor. And so the Urban Dictionary describes emasculation as the removal of a male ego, pride, and empowerment, making a man subservient or subservient or in a feminine role. Now, I'm not crazy about some of those terms, but what I believe is that when women do certain things, we can unconsciously have a man feel that we're putting him down, that we're trying to control him, that we're overpowering him. And most of us are totally unaware when we do it. And then we wonder why, why does he get so angry at us? Or why is he so defensive or shut down? So a common example of this is when a man is driving with his woman, his significant other, and he turns left to get on the highway to go to the store. And she says, hey, wait a minute, why are you taking the highway? You're going the wrong way. The back roads are faster. It's a better way. So you see what she did here is she's making him wrong and she's making herself right. And this can lead to a big fight. But I was just trying to help, she says. But in her trying to help, she's subconsciously trying to control what he does. She's not happy that he turned left and wanted to go his way. And so he feels emasculated because he now believes he can't do anything right in her eyes. So why even bother? Because this is the kind of behavior that can lead to the fracturing of a lot of relationships. I remember when I was married and I had young children and my husband would take the kids out and I wouldn't trust him to pack the diaper bag to be able to remember everything. And so I was constantly trying to correct him, tell him he was doing it wrong, you know, just trying to help, so-called help. So let me know if you've ever done these things and I'm going to share 10 ways that women emasculate men. And it's, it's um, again, it's not always conscious. I had no idea when I was telling my husband to pack the diaper bag a different way or don't forget the raisins or, you know, uh, you didn't bring enough diapers that I was actually criticizing him and making him feel less of a man. So here are 10 things that women often do. Number one, withholding respect or kindness to motivate him to do better. So, you, you know, just trying to be a little harsh or mean in order to motivate him to do better, that's not how you're going to get him to do better. And I'm going to go over five ways to stop emasculating men after I read through this list. Number two is to keep repeating how childish he is. I don't know about you, but when I was married, a lot of women would say, oh, my husband's like one of the kids. So if you've ever heard that or said that, it's not going to have a man rise up to his best self, right? Even if he is immature. So what I want to say before I go through the rest of these is that, yes, it doesn't mean that his behavior is always stellar or that he's doing everything perfectly. But it's about how do we motivate a man to do better, and it's not through these ways of behavior. Number three is complain about his job or his salary. One of the worst things we can do is to tell a man he's not working hard enough, or he's not making enough money, or his job is beneath him, even if it is, right? Even if we feel it's the truth that he can do better. Because again, that's not how you're going to motivate him. You're going to motivate him by believing in his ability, by telling him, I believe in you. When I was married, I would say probably two years, we had a child who was born with a genetic disease and my husband really had a hard time performing comedy, which was his career. And so he went to work for his parents in the plumbing supply business. I was devastated because I married this creative comedian. It was one of the things about him that I loved the most. And so I didn't criticize him for working in plumbing supplies, but I told him I was sad 
that he couldn't work as a comedian. So there's a difference in how we approach a person and how we talk about his work. Number four is when we mistrust his ability to handle things on his own. So that goes for the diaper bag or the driving or anything that we want him to rise up and do and we take over, not a good thing. Number five, we ask him for help and then we tell him he's doing it wrong. So pretty much the same kind of examples. I want you to help me. No, don't do it this way, do it that way. Number six, kind of related, we nag him or we boss him around. The way to get a person to be motivated is not through nagging and repeating. It's actually through telling him what the benefit is to you. So I just talked about this with a friend today who's married and her husband would consistently forget to clean on Fridays when it was his job to do some cleaning. And she got tired of nagging him. She told him she's going to print up a list, put it on the refrigerator, and that she also told him that when he does his cleaning and helps, she feels so supported and that means a lot to her. And he pretty much does it now without being asked. He has remembered. So it's finding a way to be gentle and kind and tell him what the benefit is because when a man knows the why, he's going to be motivated, not through nagging or bossing. Number seven, she treats him like he's a Neanderthal without any feelings. How many times do we feel that men just, they just don't know any better? And oh, he's, he's like a Neanderthal, right? He's just like a caveman. He's such a guy, you know? And that kind of thinking actually puts men down because men have feelings. They may not be able to access them so easily because they weren't made safe for him. But for many of us, it's the same, right? We were not taught to, re to reveal our feelings and to be in touch with our feelings. So instead of putting him down for having no feelings, we need to lift him up and help him express his feelings and be safe enough to express yours as well. Number eight, she compares him to her exes. Anytime a woman compares a man to her ex or says, you know, he's better, look, that guy was better looking or, you know, talks about sex and how it was different with this guy. Not good, not good, very emasculating. Number nine, she offers him unsolicited advice. Nobody should be giving unsolicited advice. If you didn't ask, you don't tell. And so when we give unsolicited advice, we're basically telling the other person, I don't really trust you to know this on your own. Number 10, she criticizes how he spends his downtime. Maybe he wants to go hang out with the guys. Maybe he wants to relax with a beer. And she says it's not good. He should not drink so many beers and he's not getting enough exercise and he shouldn't be sitting on the couch. So we want to build a man up and not down. And again, we think we're doing a good job. We think we're really helping. Like by telling him, hey, you know, you should get a different job. We think we're helping. By telling a man, hey, you know, you can make more money, we think we're showing him that we believe in him. But there's a way to say things that feels emasculating to men. And then there's a way to say things that feels like it can build a man up. So let's talk about those five ways to stop emasculating men and to create the healthy relationship that you want. So the first thing you want to do is stop trying to control. You want to trust that your guy is going to figure out things his way. His way doesn't have to be your way. So if he turns left and you thought he should have turned right and you thought there was a shorter way to get there, let him turn left. Let him get lost even and then figure it out on his own because he's not going to be resentful of you for pushing. Number two, look for the best in him. When you're consistently criticizing his job, the way he drives, the way he does anything, He's going to feel defeated and shut down. But when you focus on what he's doing well, he's going to rise up and be the best he can be. Number three, don't give unsolicited advice. Check in before 
advising him or anybody else about anything. A simple check-in. Can I share my opinion? Would you like to hear what I my thoughts on this? Number four, if you ask for help, accept how he supports you in his way. Otherwise, he's not going to offer to help again. And number five, be direct instead of nagging, bossing, indirect, sarcasm. Tell him what you want and need and then give him the space to provide it for you. So here's my call to action for anyone who has been, who has recognized any of these qualities in themselves, for any woman who has ever emasculated a man without their knowledge. Like seriously, I did this and I had no idea. But if you want to stop and you recognized that you have done any of these things, identify how you have done it, how you have unconsciously emasculated men, and then choose to take one step towards changing it so you can have the relationship that you want.